Now this should probably consider, be considered part three of the uh, Evil Twin project. But what, what I'm going to do is make a separate video here of one, using one of the tools that Vince had loaned me, the carburetor balancer. Now I've never used this Motion Pro tool before and there's a couple of things I have to do before I can use it. Number one, I have to get the little parts that allow you to tap into the vacuum in the carburetors and I don't have them in house right now. So I, I thought I'd spend today productively because I have to make one other part. Now to balance any of these four cylinder bikes, one of the things you need to do of course is have the gas tank off the bike. And since we have several four-cylinder bikes, this, this might be a time I need to make this part. Now, in the past, I've always borrowed Luciano's spare gas tank because you need to have the gas tank off the bike. And what I did, it was pretty, it wasn't really funny. I, I went out and I looked at the Motion Pro optional tank that you hang, you remove the tank and you hang it on top of the tank when you do this, this operation. Well, it's 50 bucks. And I said, you know, I'm only going to use it once a year. I don't need a $50 tool. I'm not running a dealership here. So I think I'll make one today. And I'll make a little video of how to make it yourself for basically the, the price we all like. And maybe you could even use it on an RD. I don't know. Now, one of the things we have to do is get the, those fittings before we do anything. But it's going to take a day to let the, uh, to get this part made and get the JB well drying. And I'll look on the internet today and see if I can order those little, those little, uh, the little sprues that allow you to attach the hose. And see, now one of the things I noticed with this bike, you could do, you could do the test. You can hook the four up with the gas tank in place, and you can read, do all the readings. But then you can't make any adjustments. So to get the adjustments, you have to have the tank off. So the bottom line here is, and we should have it in the shop. We should have it. We should have had it years ago. I should have just kept Luciano's and told him I lost it. Anyway, we're gonna make we're gonna make an auxiliary gas tank for doing this kind of work. And one of my next projects, I'm just mentioning this now. Since we've swapped out all the body parts, this bike has a set of carburetors that have a jet kit in it. And I just want, as long as I'm gonna be spending this winter doing a lot of work on this bike, I wanted to pull these out, clean them. I'll try to make a little video of that, a separate video, uh, paint the air cleaner. And here's what I suspect might be the problem. These rubber connectors that connect the engine to the carburetors, they're 35 years old. And what happens, they dry out and they get these little cracks in them. And so that tool will allow us to diagnose if we have a vacuum leak. And actually, I've, these are pretty hard. Sometimes, yeah, they're really hard. So, so the advantage of doing this is if you can do it on a warm day or you can somehow hair dryer those and make them soft, that'll make it a lot easier. But before we do any of that, see, I'm trying to do this logically. What the issue was at the end of last season, maybe the last four or five times I rode the bike, the idle got a little rough. I put some plugs in, got a little bit better. I adjusted the valves, and it was due for valve. It was overdue, in fact. It made it a little bit better. It idles nice now. It's fine. But I want to get it, as long as I'm doing all this work, I want to get the final little thing. This bike has never had the carbs balanced. And I want, in 35 years, 42,000, 44,000, maybe, maybe it is overdue. And it'll be a good thing to share the information with our friends, and thank you, Vince, for loaning us the tool. Now, over the years, the A-Team has teamed up to do some pretty nice stuff, some pretty good projects, and I, this, is, this is just one thing. To buy that tool, and I'm, I know it's an expensive tool, and then to get all the things you need to do these jobs, well... If you have a friend and you can mix and match tools, you can loan me this, I can loan you that, I can look on YouTube and fi find out how to do some of these things. It keeps the cost of owning a fleet of motorcycles down. And as my late mom used to say, she had a famous saying, she said, salami always tastes better when it's free. This is the old one, the old style one that uses mercury. If you look on the internet, you'll see the newer ones. Uh, probably are a little safer to use, but we'll be real careful. This is Vince's tool. I'll assemble it carefully. It has all the, the hoses in it. It has some barbs, but I don't think they're the right ones for the Suzuki. We'll find out. We don't need that today. Today what we need is some fuel line. 
a nice clean coffee can, some JB Weld, a fuel filter, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I can make this auxiliary tank today, it's a tool I'd like to have in a shop, and I probably will use, and I have to run up to Luciano's and borrow it every time I need it. I used it when I did the 750 restoration, and I used Luciano's. It worked perfectly. Now, you might be wondering why some of this, why I save all this stuff. Because fuel line is a pain in the butt. Fuel line in particular, the stuff you buy in AutoZone, say, is usually way too thick to make some of the bends you have to make. And what happens to the original, the parts that come with the, a motorcycle, sometimes they harden up. In fact, this one's still good. But a lot of them have hardened up over time. And... I've had to replace stuff here. Here's one that's like a rock. You can't even bend it. But I always like to have it just because you never know who. Here's some of the nice thin stuff. Ooh, that's nice. Now, I just made new fuel lines for the GS. When I did anytime I work underneath the bike and the fuel lines are a couple years old, the stuff is cheap enough if you buy it by the foot. It just pays to replace it before it cracks or you're on a ride and it starts dripping. And it could be a fire hazard. That, anything with gasoline is a problem. So this project starts with an ordinary coffee can. And I know there are a lot of people thinking, well, just spend a 50. Some of them I actually saw for 35 bucks. These, these one more gas can, tanks are more expensive than I thought they were. So step one is, if you're riding around town and you see somebody throwing away a lawnmower, they have it out on the curb, run over and... Or take the whole lawnmower and take it off and then throw it back out in the garbage. That would be step one. But I, these are a nice solid can and big enough because I don't need to. I don't need to put ten gallons of fuel in this. If I put it, if even one third of this, that'll be plenty for doing what I'm doing. The other thing too is you can't run a five gallon can for another reason. The motorcycle because it's sitting and you're giving it the gas and everything is going to overheat if you don't have a fan blowing on it. So this will be plenty, and we'll when we do this, we'll take a dedicated day and make a day of, of how we do it. But because I've physically never done it before, I've seen it done by other people, and I've seen it on YouTube, but I'm, I'm very interested in seeing if this is going to make the idle on the bike and that initial little blip of throttle a lot smoother. Now, it isn't like you can't drive the bike now. The bike, these are just things I get very, very fussy about. So the first part of this I wanted to mention, this, because I know a lot of my friends don't, they haven't worked with epoxy basically a good part of their life. And this is an amazing material, very handy around the house. I fixed plumbing with this, drain pipes, and actually at some point in time, uh, I'm going to go out and show it, it maybe not on this video, but parts of when I made the R1 exhaust system, it's titanium and carbon, and I needed to make a seal. I sealed it with JV Weld, not knowing if it would last. Now it's eight years since I made that exhaust. Has, hasn't leaked yet. So I guess what I'm looking at here, and what I wanted to explain to people, because I do have a little bit of a experience using this, this, this is something you have to understand. When you join two pieces of metal with this, if you prepare them properly, you're not going to break this joint. When this joint fails, it's because the part delaminates off of the JB weld. It means the part wasn't etched, scratched, roughed up, or you didn't use the right amount of, of heat to get it to penetrate. So I'm going to try to show how to do a proper joint with this. The part had for this material to work. And by the way, there's another material. If you're fixing an engine, you have a, a broken crankcase or a cylinder head even. And I've done this on a boat, so I know it works. There's a material you can buy in West Marine called Marine Tex. They're about $35 for this amount. And that material, you can put threads in it, and you'll never break the thread. It's amazing, amazing stuff. It's called Marine Tex. I guess you can buy it on the Internet too nowadays. We, we fixed a boat head engine years ago. Rail, remember, the wooden boat. Okay, so you, you could read your instructions all you want. The biggest thing is to get the part you're doing etched, rough, and clean. That's the main thing. And now when you put this material on, a little heat allows it to get down into them at a molecular level. It makes a better bond. We're going to use this. 
and it's it's oil proof gas proof and I'm, who the hell knows what else all I know is I've I've had real good luck using this for many many years and another thing and this is the kind of information you can pick up I always pick up I you would think I didn't notice but I do know it there was a time because of modeling you're always looking for on the field repairs where you can use the the model plane right away and I bought some of the five minute the stuff that dries in five minutes not even close to being as strong as this this takes overnight to dry if you unless there's a compelling reason this is the material not the quick dry not the quick JB weld now this is a trick you should use in cold weather or when fuel lines get old. Here's what happens. This is the diameter and it's got the little uh, teeth on it. If I go to plug this on right now, because this is rock hard, I've got to force it on. A lot of times you can actually break the nylon, but here's a good thing and it works every time. Even old rubber that's a hundred years old responds to heat. If you just heat it up now, if you're in a warm weather climate, this probably would never happen. Another thing, when you're trying to take the carburetors off, which I'm going to do in the next couple days, and you have those rubber boots, nothing better than a little bit of heat to soften them up. Oh, now it's almost like, oop, it's almost like a new fuel line. And you can put it on without damaging anything. That's a good tip, by the way. Now, what I wanted to show, to drill that hole, and I didn't get a good, a good camera thing on it, I wanted to get it almost the diameter of this, because I want to have at least a minimum a tight fit. But this drill, if you put a regular drill in there, at the end of it, it's going to catch and spin the can out of your hand. This is, and you get these in Harbor Freight, a set of three is about ten bucks. Now, this is the part that really matters. Here's just as an example, I got a tight fit, so this part fits really tight. I can press it in there. I don't have the minimum gap. Now, JB Weld will stick to nylon. It will stick to steel. I guarantee you that. But there's a couple of engineering things. I was originally going to put this in the middle and let it stick out. Well, it goes this way. But then what will happen is as, as it's hanging by the motorcycle, it's going to tend to do that. If it's here it's going to have a lot less tendency to do that so and again this is not a tool we use every day so in my thing because i'm on a fixed income and i spend a fixed amount of money every every day on motorcycles so what i try to do is maximize that amount of money now sandpaper rough is your friend you wouldn't want to just go right over smooth tin the rougher you can make it, the better. It's to your advantage to make it rough. Also, of course, we're going to do this in the inside. Now, nylon, same thing. But the nylon, since that's perfectly clean, a little prep wall. Get whatever grease is on here. This is an ordinary motorcycle filter, nothing special about it. The fuel is flowing out. And it's exactly the size we need fuel. If the fuel, uh, the fuel line-wise is exactly the right size. So that's going to be to our advantage too. Now, once I get it clean, of course, next thing, roughen up any spot you can. The rougher, the better if you could roughen the whole thing up. Clean it and roughen it and make sure you have a tight fit, as tight a fit as possible. Now I had to bend up a handle. Nothing fancy here. You could use coat hanger wire. I had music wire from modeling projects and these little eyelets but it wouldn't even matter if you didn't have them because you could solder a washer or wrap some wire on there. And they do the same thing. That's going to be our handle, and we'll solder these on once it's put in place. Now, using an ordinary ice pick, that's all you need to do this. 
the two little holes in there. And that's going to allow us to run that piece of wire. So we need something to hang this by. Now just a question of soldering on those eyelets. And that'll only take a second. Now I offset this handle just a slight bit so that the gas would tend to flow toward the filter. I don't think that's important. I want to make sure I do have a good soldering joint on this. I cleaned, I cleaned the wire with a wire brush. Make sure the joint is shiny. And you can always tell if a soldering joint's good if it's shiny. That allows us to hang it up. Now next step is to JB weld in the, the filter. Now once I had the solder to cool off, I wanted to put some heat shrink tubing on the end of this. Just so, because the end of that wire can catch on things and it can be sharp. This will protect, well, whatever. If a mouse gets into the can and falls asleep, he won't get hurt. Now, I thought this would be the most important step of the whole process. Now, this is, a lot of these things may be oversimplified, but I want to say them anyway. If you don't have a mixing, this is a Teflon mixing spatula for Bondo, you can use the back of that, of course. The trick with this, it's not ultra critical. When you have epoxy that the ratio is 93 to 7, yeah, it's critical. But these epoxies, whenever it's one to one, any they're not critical at all. But but it is better. It's in your advantage. And by the way, a lot of people don't notice. It's your advantage to get it one to one. There's a little point there. You press that down. That allows you to squeeze out. And you make a little uh, whatever you think. Now this material is really good. When people have problems with it, I've said that before, the, the problem is they haven't pre-cleaned the part. They've, you never see this material break in the middle of the material. It breaks, it pulls off the surface. And that's what happens when, uh, well, you know, I wouldn't fix the frame of a motorcycle with this, but the seal and engine, small things that are not under terrible, terrible stress, this, this stuff really is a miracle. And I was just out in the garage just the other day, and I, I constantly look at that. The, the exhaust system I made for the R1, I made with Huntsman resin that was good to 550 degrees. And that exhaust never gets anywhere near 550. If it does, it's gonna, you're gonna have, you've already melted the engine. And a four stroke runs hotter than a two stroke. Everybody that knows anything about engines knows that. So anyway, the, not to belabor the point, the point is a lot of people are not familiar with JB Weld. This would be a good little dissertation for them. I'll bet I've used many, many gallons of it in the world of modeling, in the world of making parts, and where it's really good is fixing the tabs on broken side covers, uh, reinforcing fairing parts, which I've done for Vlad more than anybody, I guess. Many Glenn, we did a lot of reinforcing on his track bikes. Okay, so it, this is relatively simple now. You want to get stuff on both parts. And at this point, there's no reason to be cheap with it. Get it on. I want to get a bond. What I'm looking for here is that the material bonds. Now what will make it bond even quicker is a little bit of heat. This cures in four to six hours, but a little bit of heat, it'll cure quicker. If you see bubbles, you've made it too hot. Let me just show this real quick. This is a, a key thing to JB Weld. What that does, that heat lets it on a molecular level go down into the surface. So now it's got a shiny wet look. Now we're ready to do the same thing to this part. And again, considering this, this whole thing is I'm going to guess by the time I'm done, I've spent an hour. So, 
I know people make a lot more than $50 an hour, but I don't. Not on my fixed income. I think Miles makes $50 an hour his fixed income. Oh my God. Anyway, you want to do both surfaces. This is, this is part of the trick of doing this. You don't want to just do one side and shove the plug in. That's not the best way to do it. And if you were doing an airplane, you would for sure not do it that way. I want to see the material just look wet. I do not want to see a bubble. A bubble is a no-no. Then you've gone a little too far. That's usually good. The material is shiny. And we can basically just do this. Plug it in. Now we'll add a little material. And at the end of this, I'll put some on the inside too, of course. And then I'll show the last little thing on this that will make it. When we used to make, and I made them, many of them, two cycle exhaust systems for model planes for currently known as tune pipes. Made a lot of them. Always put the fittings in with JB Weld. Don't recall even one of them failing of the hundreds that I made. But again, a two cycle engine does run cooler than a four cycle. So, now you've got that done. Now here's the final thing. You just want to see the joint just get wet. And what'll happen, you'll see this material will take on a smooth outer surface. And what you're doing by doing this, you're really letting it get a super bond. Now, if I have a, and this is, this is really not critical, but I can wipe some of this extra off just to neaten this up. Right now you can see the material is like like a milkshake, it's very thin. So what this is going to allow me to do, and I mean, not everybody would think this way. This puts $50 into my budget for buying other things. I'm never sure what those other things are until I see what I can't live without. So this is our project for the day. I would say this is something uh, we have in our tools now. We'll use it maybe once or twice a year when we do these carburetor run things, but I hope I was able to pass on some good information about JB Weld, about putting on and taking off fuel lines. A little bit of heat always helps. Now I also, when I figured this out, when I put gasoline in here, and I'll fill it about halfway, I'll put the lid on, because it's going to have, it's going to vent by those little, where, they, where the little arms go through. So there's no reason to worry about that uh, that's going to be a problem. Now, I also, I need to find, and I, I don't really need it, I can just pinch this with a pair of forceps to, to take it on and take it off. But if I was going to use this on an everyday basis, I'd get from a lawnmower shop, one of those $9 on and off valves. Forceps will be fine for me. Anyway, this was a nice little project, and I, I can say one thing. The exhaust on the R1, the JB Weld, probably means it'll fail the next time we ride the bike. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.